are all Filipinos gold diggers? Now, this is one phrase that is used often, and I want to sort of put it in perspective here, because what you've got is you take Western women, and you go through a divorce, and what do they go for? They don't go, oh, well, let's go 50-50 on everything, do they? They go, oh, I want... I want that, I want the house, I've got the kids, I've got a right to the kids as a mother, blah, blah, blah. Is that gold digging? Um, there was my old landlord many years ago. He owned 16 houses. He married this woman by mistake. Um, he was only with her three to five years. She filed for divorce. Um... She took half of his portfolio, left him with the duff houses, the ones that were no good, because there was one with some foundation problems, and the house that he had with his wife previous that died, she took that one because it was the best house, the most expensive one, etc. And the rest of the houses he had to swap for children. Basically, she didn't want her kids, but she used them as a bartering chip to get kids, uh, to get the houses, because she'd rather have the houses than the kids. Bloody horrible things, aren't they? So that's what she did. She basically took as many houses as she could. She left him with three out of the 16. Bear in mind, before they met, he had 15 of them, and there was no mortgage or anything. He'd already paid it all off, um, because after his wife died, he had, you know, death payment as such so his mortgage on his first house was already paid and it sort of half the payment was paid on the second house etc so he was ahead of the game basically because he had no mortgage on the original property so is is that gold digging because she was she was on husband number four um who else was there a friend of mine had a similar experience with um I mean, he had a bit of a misfortune because his wife got pregnant. They'd been married, got married. He already had a house. Um, He'd borrowed some money off his dad for a deposit. So he put £10,000 deposit for the house he borrowed off his father. They got married, moved in, blah, blah, blah. Um, She got pregnant, then lost the child, and then went into a state of severe depression. Now, I'm talking, didn't do a thing in the house, 16 hours a day of, um, my friend friend was working 16 hours a day, coming home to a house where his wife was either not there, or did absolutely nothing, or was bawling and screaming at him. Okay, she's going through a difficult time, um, but this is now six months on, and she she was just being i don't know i know she it's a difficult phase and you guys don't understand we but pushing all that to one side when they decided to separate the first thing she went after was the house now bear in mind she'd only been in the house a short while but the housing prices had gone up so she got 50 percent of the house uh, after the expense had been taken and basically the profit as such, because obviously she takes 50% of everything, where my friend had to repay his dad's um, £10,000 loan. So he walked away with absolutely nothing. She walked away with pretty much any profit there was in the property. And she'd invested absolutely nothing but making his life an absolute hell. So the whole point here is gold diggers are everywhere. The reason you hear a lot of the... Filipino perspective um, utilizing gold digger, gold digger, because a lot of the guys are idiots. The, a lot of the Western guys that do end up in bad situations, A, look for the wrong women, B, put too much trust, C, are often just idiots. Um, it's, it's the only way I can say it. I mean, the, there's no other way of doing it. Are the bad women? Of course they are. You're living, there is a society there that is in poverty. So as such, guys become an easy target of prey. But at the end of the day, people should take responsibility themselves. If you turn around and go, right, I married the wrong one or whatever, my mistake, that's that's fair enough. But most of these guys will just go, all Filipinos are gold diggers. It's all their fault. You know, it's not my fault. It's your fault. You should know better. There's enough information out there saying 
don't do this, don't do that. And I see it all the time. I get people message me and say, Matt, this woman, I've been talking to her online for months. I send her money regularly. And I'm like, why are you sending her money? Well, she, her daughter's sick, her, her grand's sick, the dog died or whatever. It's not your problem. It's not your problem. Don't make it your problem. I had somebody this week. Um, she's she's friends of somebody of somebody on my um, Facebook list. So I assumed that that was a couple, but it wasn't. She's just like she is a professional gold digger. So she goes, um, "Oh, how are you?" Blah blah blah, usual stuff. And I'm like, "Okay, I'm fine." You know, what do you want? Oh, she said, "Oh, we're just preparing for Christmas, but we haven't got anything." What do I do? Do I go, oh, no, delete, <laughs> instant delete, not my problem. There's a reason for this. Good Filipino people do not ask for stuff. They don't because it's disrespectful. It's, it's beneath them. They would rather starve than ask you for money. That is the difference. The ones that go, give me money, just delete them. Don't waste your time. Do not complain that there's gold diggers. All you've done is become part of this enterprise. Because I tell you now, it doesn't matter what country it is, if there was an easy resource for cash, you know, like these guys that go online with the um, the web girl sort of thing, and they're just, oh, buy me a $50 teddy bear or whatever, you know, that sort of stuff. It's exactly the same. Because it's an easy way to make money off guys. Because the guys... I'm encouraging it by sending money. It creates an industry. If guys had a bit of common sense and just went, delete, move on, I'll chat with somebody else, it would disappear in a short period of time. It really would. Now, the whole point here is lots and lots of people will go, gold digger, gold digger. You see lots of stuff, gold digger, don't. But they never turn around and look at themselves and say, I shouldn't have sent that money. Stupid me. Um, I should have known better. I, I keep reading stuff online. It says, don't do this. And I did it anyway. Um, all I had to do was press delete. And that would have been it. Also, you don't hear too many guys going, no, they're fantastic. Great, great wives, great partners. Uh, very loyal, etc., etc. Because... Good news doesn't travel that far. Good news does not stretch the imagination. Tabloids do not turn around and say happy news unless it's a royal or somebody that of insignificance. <laughs> I say that because I, I've just got no interest in the royals whatsoever. Um, the media goes after cheap media. They go after the Kardashians and that sort of nonsense. The stuff that doesn't take a lot of effort to... Because they'll, they'll trip over, do something drunk, or be found with a dead basketball player or something. They're not hard to make something interesting out of. Showing how a good marriage works and stuff takes a bit of investment in time to actually go along and say, well, why are you so happy? What's this? But more importantly, nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear how great a marriage is. This is why you don't hear lots of people going, oh yeah, I hear there's lots of good good things to hear about these people, blah, blah, blah. Because nobody talks about it. Nobody cares. Nobody's interested. They only want to talk about the bad things. As such, Gold Digger comes up quite a lot. But more than, you know, are they marrying the wrong women, going with the wrong women? The answer is yes. Do they listen to advice? 99% of the time, the answer is no. They'll come back within two weeks saying they've lost everything or whatever. And you're just going, what, what do you want me to do? I don't want to hear your sob story. And I'm not being funny. It's just I've heard it so often. But nobody wants to listen. You know, the guys that do listen disappear. You know, what happens? They turn around and they listen to a bit of advice about the Philippines or whatever. Get a bit of information on about moving there, etc. Right up to the point that they go in country. And currently, there's three people in the last week that I've been communicating with for several months that have just gone in country. Do you know how many are contacting me? Exactly. Because everything that they've listened to over the last few months, they've taken on board. They don't need my advice once they go in country. They might contact me and say, Matt, I've got a problem with 
uh, an infection or some description, you know, I need a bit of ointment um, or a bit of advice on something. But generally, they will disappear and go and live their lives quietly in the Philippines and have nothing to complain about because they've met the right person, they found the place they want to live, and they're happy. So they go quiet. They don't sit there ranting on the internet, going gold digger, gold digger, gold digger. That only happens to the negative guys. And like I said, a lot of people don't want to say it's their own fault. A lot of people don't want to accept they were fooled by somebody else. But I will always say, and I know it sounds a bit unfair, you need to turn around and say, it's my fault. Because at the end of the day, these people are still going to hit you up. You, When you go online, they will still do it. Bang. Straight in there. And these people have got no integrity to do it. And it's not just um, Filipinos. American women have done it. I mean, my brother was getting hassled by this American woman who was on about for medical stuff. I actually had to intervene and just basically tell her, leave him alone. <laughs> Because she, she was phoning him up and all sorts, wanting money. They, I mean, they're not even in a relationship, but I had to intervene and deal with it. Um, so I do understand. Because sometimes you feel like you're obligated to help this person because you spend a lot of time online with them, etc. But here's a, here's a catch. You're not physically with them. Physically, that boundary is not there. So as such... You have no responsibility for them. If they turn around and say, well, my daughter's sick or this is sick, so what? I'm not being funny. Go and get a job or whatever. Sounds pretty pretty harsh, but here is the grim reality. They were surviving before you came along. And there's no reason for you to turn around and start propping them up. And they'll come up with every story they can find. They'll have a little book. What can we steal today? And... That's why I turn around and say, enough's enough. Don't, you know, if you got ripped off, just turn around and say, I got ripped off by this one. And stick her face on online. Turn around and put what it really happened. Don't do the manipulated stuff, though. You know, because I always say there's three sides to every story. Uh, her side, his side, and the truth. I just turn around and say, just put it, you know, this, this is what happened. And you'll have to go through it yourself and you'll have to see where you made your own mistakes as well as turn around and say, well, they were, they did this, they did that. You sent the money. You did it. Doesn't matter what they say, whether their daughter's sick or whatever. Doesn't matter. You sent the money. You didn't have to. Nobody forced you to do it. Because they lie to you does not get you off with sending the money. You just turn around and go, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, and just drop the conversation, dead air, because they'll be sat there going, oh, I thought you would send some money. But if you don't do nothing, they'll just change the conversation anyway. Don't get into it. Because unless you actually physically know them, don't get into it. You cannot buy into this. Um, well, don't get people buy you into something that you don't even know if it's real or not. Simple as that. Bad women exist all the way around the planet. And at the same time, guys are often expecting more. They're often morally uh, morally accepting of lies, should we say. You, you feel morally obliged to help. But at the same time, that is based on the thought that they're actually telling you the truth, which is often not the truth. Um, that's why I always say don't date younger women for a start, because that's where most of this comes from, because they're easy to manipulate by family that are corrupt. Um, women in their 27 upwards generally have a better grip on the world and are looking for genuine guys. They're more concerned about settling down getting married and having a life doesn't matter if it's the philippines doesn't matter if it's going abroad they just want a little piece of happiness for themselves as such they're fantastic wives the the younger women i don't even know why guys bother i mean especially you know they're just trouble the immaturity levels one of the big problems with them but also they don't even see it wrong from stealing from you good women do not morally ask for money there's there's a simple response to this 
beyond that, you're leaving yourself open to it if you start sending money for every sob story. Because they smile at you does not make it okay. Because they smile at the next guy. They might even be smiling at somebody else on the same webcam. They could have like four or five conversations going on without you knowing. Just put a bit of thought into it. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah.